I speak in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. Today, we will conclude our teaching on the answers of full restoration. We have been on this for more than 10 weeks. Today, we are going to take the 10th topic, which is active faith. But before we go into this topic, I would like to recap what we have considered in this teaching. That is bringing everything together and so ensure that we understand what we have done. On the 21st of July, we started the journey into understanding those things that would enhance our full restoration. We started with the word of God. We moved from there to childlike attitude. We have discussed Christian service, witnessing, divine wisdom, praying and asking a right. We also considered generosity, genuine love for God, and faithful service. The opening sentence, the introductory sentence to this service, says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you like, know the word. Do anything that you want to do. But without faith, all we amount to nothing. Because you can't please him when you don't have faith. And that is why we are looking at what we are looking at today. Active faith as a answer of full restoration. I will pick my text from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he will later receive as inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. I decided to pick on Father Abraham because he's the father of faith. He's the only one described in the scripture as the friend of God. Looking at faith, According to what we have in that Hebrews chapter 11, look at verses 1 and 2, is being confident in what we hope for and having assurance about what we do not see. And that is the thing, the point in this verse. God picked on Abraham, called unto him, perhaps maybe one morning, afternoon or evening. He said, do you know what? You have been here for too long. I want you to leave. I want you to relocate. In his own case, it's not that I want you to relocate to Switzerland or to United States of America. Relocate to a place that I will show you no specific lo location. <laughs> Very hard one. Abraham was not a pauper. He was a big man at that time. He was well established. 
It's like telling one of the sons that I'm looking at here now, you are going to leave Nigeria where you are known as son. And you go to a place that I will show you. Go towards north. I know that we ask, towards north? Where are you going to ask me to stop? Is it going to be Sambisa or Medjuguri? They are going to raise a query. That is what faith is. But what our theme seeks to achieve? is to tell us that our faith must be visible. I've said eight times with that number from this pulpit that your faith is an abstract thing. When you claim to say, I believe in God, is just word of your mouth. Your faith must be back, backed up with action, obedience, trust. And that is why we call it active faith. In his homilies of the Gospels, one of the saints of the church, Saint Gregory, says, he who believes rightly but does not live rightly has faith without fruit. Such a faith does not save because it is barren. Our faith must be fruitful. Our faith must not be barren. Abraham's faith was fruitful. I know his relations. We'll be looking at him. What's, what has come over you? I remember when I was going to resign from the civil service. I took my, it was shortly after the Gbemu of Obasanjo era that civil servants were rejoicing. I started in the civil service with 6,000 plus, and that Bermugosa took my salary to over 16,000, almost 20,000 naira then. And I now went to the secretary at Inibadan. I tendered my resignation letter. The man on the table said, you know, Ibadan people, he said, mambo, 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 mambo. He took me to the toilet. Sure, Niya, Niya. <laughs> and the man said, don't worry, we take you to one bush. Go to wherever you want to go to. Go there once a month or two months, then we, you get your salary. He said, well, I will not submit this letter to to the director. Maybe you will have a rethink to come. I say, sir, what I'm going for does not allow me to have any skeleton in my cupboard. He said, we have venerable so 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 in the civil service. I said, no, 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 no. God is not calling me into part time. I must quit. That is what we have in the life of Father Abraham. He left everything. He left his family, his country, his comfort zone. Simply because God said go. He put his faith into action by obeying. We see this also in the life of Daniel. And the three Hebrews. The king woke up one day and said... Nobody should pray to any other God apart from the king. And Daniel said, well, that is your own. I know the God I am serving. And he went up into his room and prayed. Not minding 
what will be the outcome. The three Hebrews, they said, look at you, oh, Nebuchadnezzar. They even on Laurukwe, Malori. Listen, oh, Nebuchadnezzar. You are asking us to worship this, your golden statue. We will not bow down. We know that our God is able to save us. Even if he will not, we will still bow down to your God. Active faith. Making people know that we believe in this God. And that is what the friend of the paralytic in the gospel passage read. That is what they also exemplified. They heard that Jesus was around in the city and their friend needed healing. They took him to the venue of that crusade. But you see, crowd was there. They now looked at, ah, we must get this man to Jesus. And they climbed. They bore the roof and dropped their friend right in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the way the Bible puts it in Mark chapter 2 verse 5. He said, when Jesus saw their faith, God wants to see your faith. Your faith must be feasible. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. I want to tell us this morning, brothers and sisters, the devil's primary tactic to rob us of our inheritance is inactive faith. That is, faith that is not accompanied by action. That is not accompanied by obedience. Faith, uh, well, he said it, well, yes, I believe. But God is saying, go, and you are sitting down. Then you won't be able to get to the promise of this beautiful inheritance. Imagine what would have happened to Abraham if he had stayed back in his country. We won't be talking about him today. Imagine what would have happened if Daniel had stopped his habitual prayer life. What would have happened to the paralyzed man if the four men, his friend, left the crusade venue disappointed and grumbling? His healing would have eluded him. In a journey to restoration. We need active faith. We must cultivate active faith. If God has said something, uh, recently I was in the discussion with somebody um, because of something that I, I, I did. And he said, but why will you do that? I said, well, <laughs> few days before what happened, happened. God sat me down and explained to me. This is what we happen. You know, Venerable Adelega used to call the Holy Spirit, Olofofo. If anything is going to happen to you tomorrow, the Holy Spirit will whisper it to you today. It's only if you are not in the Spirit. I said, the God has explained everything to me. That this man will say this. This is your answer. I said, yes. Whose voice should I obey? I should obey the voice of God. Not the voice of man. No matter who you may be. That is active faith. It is now between you and God to settle you. Active faith. We need active faith. To show God that we have no other means aside from his divine option. It is when we have other means that we are doing behind him. That's when we won't yield in obedience to what he's telling us. And without faith, 
it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God has promised us comprehensive restoration this year. It's an all-round restoration. To bring about this promised restoration, we are called to actively cultivate the faith through practices such as prayers, Bible study, obedience, stepping out of our comfort zones, persevering through trials. See, it's no joke. To <laughs> your work with God is no joke. It can take you out of your comfort zone. It can make you veer off your plans for yourself. But what God is saying, follow me. Don't overtake me. Don't lag behind. Don't be distracted. Just follow me. To make our faith active, if it's God who is asking, won't I suffer? You won't suffer if it is God who is asking you to go. Abraham did not suffer. God enlarged his coast. Daniel did not suffer. He became a boss in that city that King Darius now said, whoever worship any other God apart from the God of Daniel must be killed. If you walk with God, it may be hard, but God will give us grace to follow him bumper to bumper. I say God will give us grace. Fear is an enemy of active faith. We may face societal pressure, workplace policies, personal struggles that challenge our faith. But active faith moves beyond fear and compels us to obey God's word. And that is why Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, we have not been given spirit of fear, but spirit of power, of love, and sound mind. We must deal with doubt. If you doubt, you can't receive anything from God. It weakens our resolve to follow God's leading. Active faith rejects complacency and laziness. Many believers are lazy. They will just pray, 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 pray. But whatever God is asking them to do eh, as step of faith, they won't do it. Complacency and laziness. We are passive. And that is why Christians in position of authority, they are so... They are so weak. They are just there. Nobody, they, they are Christians by name. Michael, Gabriel. Uh, don't you know I'm a Christian? I go to church every Sunday. But what are you doing? You do what they do. God is asking you, don't follow them. And you follow them. During the retreat for the uh, confirmation candidate, one of them said, Esumi, sir, what you are telling us now is that I should not uh, participate in the usual runs. In the, he works in the civil service. I said, which run? Anything you are doing outside the public service rule is not permitted. <laughs> you don't do it. Anything that is not there in the public service rule he said, but they will give him, let them give you name. I said, they can even kill you. If you want to die, die. You will make heaven. That is the attitude. It's not about this thing. That must be our attitude. We don't want to die. And we say this word is not, it's not pleasurable. 
But we have faith that there is a place better than here. But we don't want to go there because we are so unsure of our relationship with God. Run away from complacency, laziness. We run away from it. It is also noteworthy that active faith is inseparable from obedience. We are often called to step out in faith to leave our comfort zone. Whether in our personal lives, ministry, or work with God. Like Abraham, we are expected to do so without raising queries or grumbling. We must always watch out for worry, anxiety, as it distracts us from trusting in God's provision and plan. It keeps us focused on our problems instead of relying on God's promises. Jesus directs us, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. I urge you today, embrace active faith, cultivate it, live out your faith, let people know that you are serving a living God and your restoration will be guaranteed. I pray you will not miss your restoration. You will live out your faith and people will know God through you. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen.